It's just before dawn on the 18th of August, and I've just driven 17 miles to the small village of Sutton Courtney, just north of Ditko in Oxfordshire. And I'm not alone. As you can see, hundreds of people are gathering around the town of Didcot to see the final three cooling towers of Didcot Power Station be demolished. Construction on the power station began in 1964 and it opened commercially in 1970, receiving an award in 1968 for how well it blended in the natural landscape. Local residents thought otherwise, but many residents were employees of the station themselves with the power station bringing thousands of jobs to the local area and essentially creating modern Didcot. Its location was chosen specifically to take advantage of the nearby rail link of the Great Western Main Line and the Thames River to supply coal and water to the power station. Its location next to the railway line made it a landmark for travellers heading to London as you knew you were only an hour away from London when you saw the tower. There are originally six towers of the planned eight only six being built in the end to reduce the eyesore of the power station and arranged specifically in groups, again, to reduce the visual impact of the station. Debatable how much effect this had, considering that practically every town in South Oxfordshire can see the power station. Environmental legislation forced the coal-powered station to close in 2013, while the smaller natural gas power plant still operates on the site. Demolition began shortly afterwards, resulting in tragedy when four workers were killed when the boiler house collapsed during demolition, and three of the towers were blown up in 2014, the remaining three being scheduled to be demolished today. The power company actively discouraging viewing of the demolition, information has been scant on to when the actual explosion will happen. The public have been given a window of between 6 and 8 a.m. on Sunday morning for when the demolition will occur. As a result, people have been gathering since about 5am. I arrived at the scene at 5.30, getting into position as field at about quarter to 6. Rumours suggesting that the demolition will happen shortly after 6. These proved to be false, with news officially coming shortly after 6 that the demolition will occur at 7am. Meaning we'd, just, we'd wait around for an hour. It, ma many people were well prepared though, bringing chairs, picnics, food, books perfecting the cameras, flying their drones, everyone anticipating the moment that the tree towers will fall. I'd actually looked in quite a bit here, as this is probably as close as you, you could get to the towers legally, with the, with the enforced perimeter just being on the outside of the field, we're only about 600 metres from the towers. From here not only did we have a clear view of the power station, but also of the actual explosives set on the outside of the three cooling towers in blue netting. On time at 5 to 7, a distant siren could be heard from our spot, and four minutes later, followed by another one. And then, one minute after that, the towers went down. As the dust literally settled and the crowd cheered, a few people observed that the cables above our heads were swinging quite widely due to the shock waves of the explosion. I paused the video to take some stills of the dust cloud, and while doing so, the inevitable happened and the cable shorted, resulting in about three flashes along the cables above our heads, sending the whole crowd into a panic and running away. The one, fortunately, the one above the main crowd was relatively minor short, causing no fire or real explosion. Though there was a major one further back at the road. This is the one that we much publicised on Twitter later. Ah yeah. oh, fuck, that's near my car. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Strange how a power company couldn't predict that happening at their own power station. Hmm. Just to add to the fun, there's a power line on fire right next to where my car is parked. And no one's going anywhere because some, there's a dispute going on. And who the fuck has the right away here? 
So some people are trying to go out this way, some people are going to try out the other, go out the other way. Excellent. She's still running away. Great, this is just what we need. To clear up the rumours and misinformation going around I, in the hours following this incident, no, a, dr a drone did not hit the pylons, and the power company's statement that the demolition was completely unrelated to the power cut, complete rubbish. It, it was. It was caused by it. Sorry, he messed up. Fortunately, no one was injured in the minor explosion, and the traffic jam just happened to stop right at my car. So actually, I had a completely clear path out of here, and about 20 minutes after the towers were down, I was back on the A34 heading back north. And so there you have it. One of Oxfordshire's most famous landmarks is no more. In October, the chimney will collapse, and, and there will be no remnants left of Didcot A power station.